Hi, I was looking for a set of retracts for my um, for my octocopter, and um, when I saw the price that people were asking for them in excess of six seven hundred dollars, um, I thought I'd do it myself. So here's how I found it possible to make a perfectly good pair of retract for under twenty dollars for a quadcopter and around forty dollars. For a big octocopter. I'm going to do it for an octocopter. Um, the only difference is that for the quad you probably need only two of these systems and for an octo put four of them. This is what you need. You need a bit of a 10 millimeter solid uh, aluminium or alloy tube, a bit of four millimeter studding and a bit of Three millimeter studding, um, two bits of uh, carbon tube. This is twelve millimeter carbon tube, millimeter thick. So the inside diameter is ten millimeters. That's very important. That's probably the only important part about it because of the size of the serverless retract. Um, the serverless retract. I got from Hobby King and they are only $14 a pair. So I bought four for my octocopter that made $28. Anyway, I just found it on the computer for you. Those are the ones that you're looking for. A pair of, they sold in pairs, a pair of serverless retracts and the shaft is four millimeters in diameter. Okay, the first thing to do is to remove the um, stud, the shaft that comes with the serverless retract. That's quite easy to do. It's held in place by a couple of small grub screws, 3 mil scrub grub screws. Just undo them. There we go, and pull it out. There you are, you throw that away. Next, you get cut off about two inches of the four millimeter studding. Replace the stud with the threaded studding. Here you go, and tighten it up. There you go. Next we cut about 10 millimeters off the end of our 10 millimeter uh, tube, solid tube, and fill a hole through the center, a four millimeter hole through the center. And if you can see that four millimeter hole through the center. We then take our serverless retract mechanism that we've placed a four millimeter stud in and thread our little collet that we've made down. How about put a bolt either side and tighten it up so that it looks like this bolt, call it bolt. Now we take hold of the uh, 12 millimeter tube and just slide it over the top. The next thing to do is to fix that. Here we mark a place on the landing gear leg where we can drill a two and a half millimeter hole through the leg and through the collet. When we take it apart we now have to dismantle it, take the collet off and drill a 2.5 millimeter hole there 
that we can thread into 3 millimeters. Okay, here's the jeweled collet there, and it's tapped with a 3 millimeter thread. It's probably best to take the collet off before you drill and tap it, because you don't want to go through the shaft. Um, then the whole thing will fall apart. Okay, once you've drilled and tapped the hole, slide the undercarriage leg, landing gear leg, over, and you've got a little uh, three millimeter grub screw type thing here. Put a bit of uh, Loctite on it. As the aluminium thread is not very strong, you might just as well lock it in. And in she goes. There you are, that's going to hold it nice and strong. Uh, now, you only need to make two of these if you've got a quad. Uh, I've got uh, an octo, so I've made four of them. Um, the next thing to do is to make the sprung oleo. Now if you don't want to put sprung legs or oleos, this is as far as you need to go really. So it's probably a good time to test them. So here we go, I've connected the, the um, serverless mechanism up via a servo tester. Let's see if it works. Lovely, now you need to check all of them. Um, to make sure that they're not binding. This one seems to be okay. And they're surprisingly strong, the mechanism. Um, I'm going to uh, show you what, how I attach mine to my copter uh, later on. Um, but if you're not, if you don't want to use sprung oleos, and all you really need to do now is to attach skids on the end of the landing gear arms. Skids of your own choice and use an attaching method of your own choice. Um, I used a complicated, well, fairly complicated method using springs, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, this is what I do to make the sprung part of the leg First of all, on each leg I drill a hole right the way through, about 70 uh, millimeters from the end, and then a 25 millimeter long slot right the way through there, um, and about 10 millimeters away from the end. That's so that we can put a spring inside and that will stop the spring from coming out. So we need a spring that fits inside, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter tube compression spring. We place a bolt through the hole up here. That stops the spring from going up any further. Now I've got some 10 millimeter um, tube diameter. I didn't have any carbon fiber in the junk box, but I had some of this white plastic stuff, which is fine. So you cut a piece off as long as you want. Um, um, you know, the longer it is, obviously, the longer your leg's going to be. So if your if your gimbal hangs way down below the airframe then you can make this longer. I made it about, well, this length, let's, let's see, what is it? About 100 mil long. And 
25 mil from the end, drill a hole through. And on the other end, 10 millimeter from the end, drill a hole through at right angles to the one you've drilled up at the top. And a little groove there and see what that's for in a minute. Okay, so that will slide in to the landing leg and compress the, sp the spring. Now you'll see that hole is going up and down the slot and we need to put a stud through there. There you go. And we'll put a bolt on the other end of that in a minute. So there we are, we've got our compression leg. Now what we need to do is put the leg on at the end. Now, I've only cut small skids because I'm having four of these on my octocopter, but if you've got a quad, then these skids would obviously be much longer. Just place it on the end there. There we go, here's one I've done. And put a cable tie around and that'll hold it. And then you just put your preferred piece of piece of rubber to cushion the landing. Now obviously you're going to have your own method of mounting your retracts to your airframe but this is the method that I used. If you look on the serverless retract mechanism there's a mounting plate this side now, I need it on the other side, basically. So we need to take that mounting plate off. Unscrew it, take it off. Okay. That bit's off. And you'd think, as the holes are already pre-drilled on the other side, you'd just be able to screw it on that side. Well, that doesn't work. I wonder why not. Is the hell is it all different? So, what I did is I fabricated a plate, a larger one than the one that's that I've taken off, with the holes in the correct in the correct places, and when I mount it on there, that I can then use that plate to attach to the octocopter which I'll show you later on. So there it is mounted, ready to go on the copter. Brilliant. Now we've got the mounting plates um, bolted on to the landing legs. We're ready to mount them to the octocopter. Here I've attached the uh, I've attached the undercarriage legs to a partially completed airframe, and I've just lashed up a servo tester to all four legs to show you the operation how it works. So gear down. Gear up. They're a bit close together so I might mount them further out on the legs. There you are. Octocopter. An octocopter retract system for under $40.